I wanted to make sure <laughs> that we talk about strength training. This is yeah. something that you and I have a lot of similarities in. And just in studying your work, one of the things that I've noticed, they're we slightly different, but also still parallel. I noticed that you talk a lot about the diff- so there's a couple different outcomes when you're weight training. So there can be hypertrophy, which is muscle size and growth. There can be strength and power. And uh, often they're corollary with each other. Like often mm-hmm. when you have more muscle size, you are stronger. But th- I mean, the reverse is not always true, but they're often corollary, right? So I thought we could start off with a couple of, again, some definitions in terms of what is strength training or power training and what is the difference, let's contrast that with hypertrophy training. Mm-hmm. So resistance training on a whole is push pulling a load that is greater than what you normally would. So that's the basis of it. When we look at the power-based end of things, that's the zero to six or seven reps at around 80% or more of your one repetition maximum. And it is more of a central nervous system drive factor. So it's really recruiting muscle fibers and we're priming this central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system to be able to have really fast nerve conduction to stimulate muscle fibers to cohesively contract quickly to be able to lift a heavy load. When we look at the hypertrophy end of things, this is where we're looking at reps of 10 plus. And we can also talk about 10 plus to failure. And the goal of the hypertrophy is to stimulate a metabolic stress that will rip or break down the muscle fiber. And then it responds or the body responds by building that muscle fiber back as well as more because the body now is like, oh, I need to have more muscle fibers to be able to overcome the stress of this longer duration load lifting. So when we're looking at the whole spectrum of things, it never really is one or the other because if you are doing hypertrophy training, one of the first adaptations that women have when they first start strength training is a neuromuscular response, right? So it's not exclusive. When we start focusing on the heavier loads versus the reps to failure, that's where we start to get this discrepancy, especially when we're talking about it in strength and conditioning research, or we're looking at it from a social media perspective where women should strength train all the way through their life, but what does that mean? And what does that look like? So When I talk about the heavier end of loads, it's when we're hitting perimenopause and looking at the very first thing that goes, the very first thing that women will talk about losing is strength and power. You'll have people who are like, well, you know, six months ago, I could run a 730 pace and now I can't even hit a nine, but they haven't lost muscle mass. They've just lost the strength and power and the economic ability to run faster. And so when we start looking in and digging into the physiology, we see that estrogen is really tightly tied to myosin phosphorylation. So myosin and actin are two binding contractile proteins. And myosin will bond to actin in a very strong sense to create a strong contraction. When we start losing estrogen, we stop getting the stimulus for a very tight bond. And this is why we start to feel like we're not as strong or as powerful. We see this happening before we lose lean mass. So when we're talking about perimenopause and trying to maintain more aquarium of performance, we talk about let's lift heavy on the heavier end so that we can keep that phosphorylation of the myosin and keep that strong muscle contraction, but not because we're producing more estrogen, but because we now have a very strong central nervous system response that then builds down to the peripheral response to say, hey, we need myosin to really connect with with actin in a very strong bond to be able to have a very strong muscle contraction to lift this load. And at the same time, you will get lean mass development. We see in the research that when you start to lose the strength and power, you also start to lose the quality of the muscle fiber and get more cell death, which is what leads to the lean mass loss. So this is the contention point when we start talking about women who are perimenopausal plus and the types of strength training we should do. But the caveat is people who do not have a history in strength training shouldn't immediately go to the heavy loads because it is a journey. It takes time to learn how to lift heavy properly. 
So when I first start coming out saying you should lift heavy, it's because I'm already working with and within an active population who has a history of strength training. But for women who are just starting the strength training journey, let's look at how you move first. And then we start adding some load. We want to go 10 or more, maybe to failure to start getting that that neuromuscular response and building some muscle. And then we can periodize into heavier lifting and getting that really good response and adaptation that doesn't require estrogen. I'm so happy you said that. Thank you so much for saying that. I think that is such a, oh, it's, it's so obvious that you've worked with so, with so many women before. I wrote a, I wrote an article for Mind Body Green not too recently around this. Very, it's like we, especially for perimenopausal women, like I'm 47. So I grew up in the cardio section of the gym. I was a step bunny. I was teaching step. I was doing Tybo. I was doing all the things like on the elliptical. All the, So I grew up in the cardio section of the gym. And now we have this shift Mm-hmm. from being like a cardio bunny to being a muscle mommy, right? So we have this like, yep. we want to be swole, we want to have, we want to get jacked. And we want, we all, I mean, maybe, I mean, I want to get jacked. Not every, I know that everybody doesn't want to get jacked, but I want to get jacked. Uh, yeah. But we want, we want to build muscle, okay? So now we have this, this scenario where you have a woman who has been, you know, 1200 calories. And I see this all the time in the clinic, like 1200 calories. She's doing four to five cardio sessions per week. And now we're moving that woman over and she's like, okay, now I'm going to do a deadlift. Like what? So there's no motor, there's no motor, there's no motor patterning. There's no control. Mm -hmm. She doesn't have that mind muscle connection. So I love that you're saying that because that puts her, if she's just listening to little snippets on social media and not listening or reading, you know, your book or listening to a long form podcast like this, not understanding the nuance of actually you need to develop the motor pattern first. Mm -hmm. Your technique must come first and that's going to come at lighter loads. We're going to check the ego at the, at the door of the gym. That's the enemy in the gym is your ego. And you're going to get the technique right before you progress. And then we can eventually progress you to these strength ranges, which I, which I love. And I think we all should be doing because it's, you know, it not only builds strength, but it's also going to help maintain bone density and some of these other things that you're, that you're describing, right? If we're doing these strength ranges, we're going to maintain that integrity for the, for the, for the, for the myocyte to continue to the, the myosin and the actin to continue contracting in the way that you've described. Yes, exactly. And I don't like the clickbait that's out there. Like people are just headlining and getting more and more polarized because yeah. then it creates this massive confusion. And then you'll have other people who are saying one thing and then we're saying something else. And it just, it's awful. So yeah. it's a yeah. journey. Like we're not talking about a strength block. We're talking about what are we doing now to phase in so that when we're 80, we could be like Train Like Joan, who is deadlifting oh, 200, right? She's I amazing. Her. I know, I love, I love her. her too. I want yeah. to meet her. I she's my Me idol. Too. And she yeah. I think she only started training if I'm not mistaken at like 69 or 70 and she's yes. maybe 75 or 77 yep. something like that now. Yep. And she's phenomenal. Yeah. Phenomenal. Which shows you that you can build muscle and get super strong at any age. Yes. Yes, it's yes. like the best time was 10 years ago and the second best time is today. Is now. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <Right> now. <laughs> yeah.